Glass is a very special medium. It does, it's so different than everything else, but it's also sort of has an aspect of almost everything else, of drawing, painting, you know, different types of sculpture. It's like metal sometimes. It's like, you know, it's a liquid, it's a solid, and it has these, these states in between where you can really do some crazy stuff. And so I just, I just dived in head first. When I talk about this, what I like to say is that glass has become my job, my source of income. It's my creative outlet. It's a sense of catharsis, um, you know, in terms of I kind of like work my own shit out on the torch. You know, I, I put it into the work. But it's also the, some of the strongest connections that I have with other people. Uh, my closest friends are within this industry, you know, so I kind of, I live this it's a, it's a lifestyle um, and it allows me to, in retrospect, sort of be who I am, I think, and to find out like who that is, you know? You know, I came to my first AGE show, I think in 2005, maybe, something like that. And, you know, I, I did great for myself, I thought. And ever since, it's, it's only grown, you know? And, Honestly, the last three years at AGE, we've sold out our booth at the VIP buy every single year. And, you know, that growth, you know, I attribute it, some of it for sure, to the exposure that I've gotten at these trade shows and AGE in particular. The buyers are right. They keep everything, you know, kind of, they keep the, you know, industry we don't want in the American Glass Expo out and they keep what we do want in, you know, and they, they treat us right, so we enjoy AGE, and we're always going to keep coming back. Jeez, that, that, our industry is ever expanding, and I see it all the time online. I see it when I go out in public in my own town where people don't have any idea what I do, or that there's even people doing what I do, and the fact that there's people doing what I do and making a living off it even, and that's like this, you know, hidden subculture almost. I can't even really call it a subculture because it's almost, it's like boiling at the brim. You know, it's kind of definitely creeping over a little bit and it's getting out there into society. And every time, you know, you, I meet somebody, I pass my information along, I don't hide what I do. You know, I used to feel the need to tell people I made wine glasses and marbles, you know, and other such trinkets. And now the first thing I say is I make the coolest bongs you've ever seen. And nine out of 10 times it's true. That other 1%, you know, those people are like, oh yeah, I know this guy or that guy. And it's like, okay, cool. You already know what a cool bong is then. <laughs> when I started blowing glass and people would ask me what I would do and I would tell them, oh, you know, I make glass. I kind of never wanted to tell them I made pipes because it was, it was kind of a gray area. And I feel like that's why people weren't using their real names back in those, in those times either. And, and now it's, feels so much more of a legitimate thing with states changing their, their weed laws and legalization and just, it's more in the mainstream culture nowadays, like marijuana culture is more mainstream now. So the it just helps the glass scene just keep gathering momentum. It's kind of like skateboarding. There's so many people doing it now. It's, it's pretty crazy. So, and it's an accepted thing. Like it's, it's not like, oh, you're not going to be able to make money doing that or like what are you going to do people are like no people are actually surviving off of this and i think all of us are continuously trying to feel that and and understand what it is because it seems like there's one thing that is pushing it one year and then the next there's something completely different and everybody's like it's not going to survive or things has to change or 
So it's really hard to, to, to say where it's going. I think that if anything, it's getting recognized in different avenues. People are starting to understand it, whether they want to put it in a museum or try to put it in a gallery or whatever. It's definitely something that is starting to just kind of be a common thing, like where people know who Dale Chihuly is. You know, more from my generation, people, you know, know who more of all of my peers are, you know, so it's, it's, it's definitely something that is changing that, like even in schools and universities or whatever, so. I think the sky's the limit. I, I really do. I think we have some super talented people in this glass world making some incredible things with completely original ideas. Um, yeah, I don't see it stopping. I think it's just going to keep getting bigger. I realized the hype was real when, you know, I'm standing at the booth, we had all the pendants up on the board, and there's this huge line of kids waiting to get in, and I just heard the feet, and they all seen them coming towards me, and I was almost overwhelming at first, and it really made me realize, I was like, oh my God, they're coming, they're coming for this, and it was a huge, like, um, gratifying moment, you know, it was just really big. It made me feel like just endlessly grateful, to be honest, it, it was big for me. I've never seen a mad dash for a glass booth and uh, just so many people wanting it like that. It was, it was great to see. It was very busy at the booth when they first opened it, certainly. Uh, organizing that sort of chaos is something that's not always easy and we really want to be fair to everyone. With the market being very low supplied and us not putting anything out, it just makes it where when we finally do, the thirst is so real that the shops know they're not going to have another chance to get it for a while. They really want to get it right then. Demand is what it is. Andrew's only able to make so much. He does everything himself. Nobody's making anything for him. So it's one of those things where we do what we can do and the response has been overwhelming and incredible and it's amazing. As far as I you know, recall, like the glass scene started small, you know, and it has evolved into this humongous thing now. There's people left and right trying to get into it. There's, you know, shops opening, new galleries opening, there's online stores opening, there's so much happening and, you know, there's a lot of revenue going on with it and so that's driving people, you know, you find you know, investors that are coming through with large sums of money that are just like, oh my gosh, I see the worth, I see the desire, the want, and they're businessmen. They, they make moves to make money, and there's a lot of money to be made in the game here, and, you know, a lot of, you know, art to be made too. I, I stick with, you know, make what I like, and then money follows passion. So, um, you know, it's just growing more and more and more the investors the collectors the stores is exponential growth in this industry and there's a lot of room for it in the country and in the world because you know 
times are changing and you know people have loved art since the beginning of time and we make art beautiful art so I really like how just everybody's really defining and refining what they do and how they do it and figuring out who can put it together and who can't put it together who works well together who doesn't work well together and I think that's just taking our you know industry as a whole and just really refining it you know as it's been you know I started in 96 and it's been slowly refining every year ever since and it's like there's no stopping it and each year you don't know what you're gonna expect next year um, so it's just that excitement of like what you know what are we all turning this into you know where are we going with this you know not that many people know where they're going with all this they're just fully engulfed and addicted to it and just can't stop thinking about the next thing By coming together every six months like this, we get to like remind each other why we do this, I think. You know, it's like part of, part of that. So I think the show is, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's like a, a way to kind of take that, the temperature of things or to, you know, to kind of see like where you stand again. And, and relevance is relevant, <laughs> you know, so you have to, in order to stay relevant, you have to, you know, know what is, you know, and so the show is like, a, you know, you, you can only be on Instagram for like so many hours a day, you know, <laughs> so the show allows you to kind of see everything up close and what's really going on and, you know, and fucking hang out too. So. Now just, when you provide a place, you know, for people to do business, you know, and you bring other like-minded people together into that same place, you know, it's, it just, it creates a, you know, an experience where you can get shit done, get your business done. Um, you know, I think age definitely provides that, you know, they work all year, they have, you know, it's not just about the show in January or the show in July, it's about the awards ceremony. I don't know any other industry that has a trade show quite like ours, and that's dope. Most exciting thing in the industry for me, I mean, I gotta, I gotta say it. I hope this doesn't make me look like an asshole. But the most exciting thing is the fact that people are selling pieces for like hundreds of thousands of dollars, or at over a hundred thousand dollars. You know, and it's now it's like, it's not like oh it happened once. It's like it's fucking happening. It's like every time Mothership wants to make a hundred thousand dollars, they just gotta make a certain level of piece, and then just be like, all right, who wants this one? I mean that's what it, that's what it feels like, and I and I I only am saying that with the utmost respect for what they're doing. I don't want I don't want that to be like misconstrued. It is fucking amazing, and Scott Deppie is I, I like I fucking chewed his ear for like 20 minutes last night about how much he's shifted my paradigm and and continues to, and that's kind of what that is is that the you know the industry is like figuring out you know how big you know it's it's fucking flexing its muscles a little bit and that is exciting because it, it even if i never get to that point just the potential of it just the again that the shift of paradigm of that is like you know what can't we do you know where where is the ceiling is there even a ceiling you know what what is going to happen if things go completely legal recreational you know what if federally we are accepted <sighs> who knows so that's exciting to me. You know, it, it all just keeps swelling and growing and expanding. And it's w way bigger than my comprehension. I'll say that for sure. I can't keep up with everybody's out there and <clears throat> who's doing what and it, it blows me away. <laughs> I'd say if you wanted my opinion on, you know, 
the industry and how you know the economics of it are working i you know i'll just say you know let's look look back in history and see where it started again and you know you see kids on lot selling glass at you know you know grateful dead shows and stuff like that which is you know a lot where the you know pipe making industry started you know this very you know hippie happy you know we like to burn it down and just enjoy ourselves kind of thing right so you look at that and it was pretty you know no offense but you know small time and now you look at where we are now in the industry and you have artists out there that are just absolutely slaying it they're getting a very good premium for their glass and their glass is exquisite and the collectors that are purchasing it they're treating them like museum quality pieces i think that if you look at the history and you look at like where it's gone it's only elevated itself from one spot to the next to the next to the next and you know if the, if the world keeps going the way it is if the laws in this country keep getting the way that they should get you know i don't see why there there should be any ceiling I don't see why and I think that the people that are out there collecting and enjoying the artwork they're only going to get wiser to it you know it's only going to be you know exposed you know to more people in the future and that's only going to bring more collectors more interest and more passion